Last week, I announced the release of a cryptocurrency trading platform that I had been working on for the last two years with a bunch of talented developers. In this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to use ACR and how to automate your existing trading strategies or to find new strategies that work for you that you wouldn't be able to identify with manual trading. So naturally, the first thing you want to do is create an account and then you're going to end up on the dashboard page. And this is just an overview of all of your uh, trading bots performance. So if you, uh, for example, look down here, this is uh, the, the performance of one specific trading bot, but right above it, you're actually going to see the performance of all your other configurations. Underneath that is your portfolio split by cost basis. What that means is that these are not actually individual trades, but they are an average sum of all of your trades that are related to this particular asset. So you can see here, BTC, USDT, uh, I've got my total value, and I've got a cost basis, quantity, and the unreal unrealized profit. If I click on that, it will actually open all of my uh, individual trades, individual orders that I had placed on this asset. You can perform certain actions such as selling or removing this. And in the next cycle, when the application runs, these assets will be sold. This is the create strategy page, and this is what you're going to be using in order to create a new strategy. You can see that at the top, you've got a general options layer, and then um, you've got something called layer selection. Now let's go through that in a bit more detail to understand what's going on here and how you can best leverage the ACR strategy builder. First of all, you've got a strategy name. Naturally, all names are Norse references. Um, next, you've got buying options. Now, buying options are things that refer to what to buy, how much to buy, and, and when to stop buying. So the first one is order amount, which is the amount of each order placed by this strategy that you're currently building in the base asset of your choice. But right now, we've limited that to USDT, so this amount is only in USDT. So this would mean 15, 15 USDT. Uh, max order refers to the maximum number of orders that the bot will manage at any given time. There will there can't be more than five open orders at one time. Uh, you can tick this box if you want to buy coins that you're already holding. When it comes to the volatility cool-off, this refers to assets that the strategy shouldn't buy after a period of time from the moment that it bought these assets originally. So. If you set the volatility cool off for one minute, then ACR, if let's say ACR just bought BTC USDT now, and then there's another signal within one minute to buy BTC USDT again, ACR will ignore this signal. Frequency refers to how quick the strategy will run. Um, so if you set it to one minute, the strategy will check the buy signals periodically every minute. Then we've got asset selection. Pretty self-explanatory, but there's something to note here. You can select as many assets as you want to perform the analysis on, but if you leave the selection empty, ACR will by default select all of the assets available on that exchange. You can naturally restrict this behavior by only selecting the coins that you are interested in. For our example, we're just gonna select these four assets uh, with a take profit of 3% and a stop loss of 7%. You can also enable trailing stop loss and trailing take profit. Think about it as kind of like a pincer that follows the current price. And this is where the cool stuff is. This is the layer selection. Now, the volatility scan gives you two options. You have an option to select a price change and the volatility window. The way they work, for instance, if you set a price change of 5% and a volatility window of uh, let's say 30 minutes, you're now scanning for assets on the exchange of your choice that have moved by more than 5% in price in the last 30 minutes. If you're happy with that, you click save and you've successfully added a volatility layer. You can see it in here. This is your summary. These are your general options. These are the options for your volatility setting and any other layer that you add on top of this will be added to this table. Now, the cool thing about it is that you can layer different indicators on top of an one another. So in, uh, in addition to the volatility layer, you can also add computed indicators. Computed indicators are actually trading view indicators. The cool thing is that trading view does all the heavy lifting for you. You don't need to manually input the buy and sell signals of every indicator. Um, so the moving averages threshold refers to how many of these signals here need to return a buy 
in order for the strategy to actually process this entire module as a positive, as a buy signal. So we're gonna say that three out of three will need to be positive and two out of two oscillators will also need to be positive in order for this module to register a buy. Because we now have two modules, it means that our strategy needs to meet the criteria of our volatility as well as our computer indicators in order to buy an asset. If we were to also add a technical analysis indicator, which is basically the manual version of trading view, you can add different indicators and you can select them, you can manually select the value, then all three of these layers would need to agree that this is a good condition and it's a buy. So it's only when all three of them would be positive that the strategy would buy. So the more layers you add, the more robust your strategy, but also the less your chances of actually uh, creating a positive buy signal because you're testing multiple criteria. On the technical analysis layer, you can just choose a certain indicators you can also have the rsi or you can have the open price the volume uh, the high but the cool thing about it is that you actually can choose whether they're equal to another indicator or another value so if i choose equal to the momentum indicator now this will only trigger when this is equal to this obviously you need to uh, ensure that what you that the, the, the logic that you're creating and evaluating against makes sense uh, for our strategy we're not going to go to a technical with a technical analysis indicator we're just going to stick with the volatility and computed indicators once you're happy with your settings you can also check the behavior which will tell you exactly when your strategy is going to place a trade you can see that this strategy will trade USDT pairs of 15 USDT and a maximum of five orders at a time. When a coin receives a buy signal for three moving averages and two oscillators and when these have gained at least 5% in the last 30 minutes. You click save. And this is now our strategy. All we got to do to run it, we enable notifications so we can be notified in the notification tab here when our strategy places a trade, start. If you select paper trading, you'll just be testing this with virtual money. It's highly recommended you test your strategies before taking them to the market. Uh, so we're just gonna give it uh, an amount of $500 and press start. And we can now monitor our strategy and we can see that it just ran and it hasn't generated any buy signals yet. That means that there are no coins of the ones that we have selected that have been more volatile than our threshold. The next thing that I want to show you guys is the social hub. Now, this is where you can actually go to find new strategies and see what other people are doing. Uh, the cool thing about it is that if the user has marked their strategy as public, you can actually view the details of that strategy. You can see exactly the kind of strategy they're running. Uh, not only that, but you can actually clone it as well. So you can see that this strategy has an overall profit of 0% for now, and it's been running for zero days, which means it's quite a, a fresh strategy that someone's created. Um, but we can also filter by profit. Oh, so we can see that we have a couple here with 2%. We also have this one with 11% profit. That's using the volatility module and it's looking for all of the coins. If we look at the details, it has a volatility cooldown of 60 seconds, which means that it's running its logic every 60 seconds for all of the coins on the exchange without a trailing stop loss, uh, with a stop loss of 10% and a take profit of 2.5%. The price change for this is 5% and the volatility window is one hour. So we can just clone this. We go to our strategies and we'll just start it. And just like that, we're now running uh, someone else's strategy that had been running for a few days and was proven to be profitable. One thing I'd like to add to copy trading You've got to also test it yourself. Don't think that if there's a strategy on there uh, that's profitable, that will automatically be profitable for you. It could just be, uh, it's it's subject to the market changes and the market constantly changes, right? Maybe when the person created this strategy originally, it was profitable, but it may have lost its momentum. Uh, you, you're, you're also bear in mind that you're copying something that's already running. So you, you're not copying existing positions. You're just copying the strategy. You're not copying the individual trades. So your, your strategy will trade in the same way 
as their strategy, but it's quite likely that you're going to have different results because you're not copying existing positions. And even if you were to copy existing positions, you couldn't copy them in the past retrospectively. It would open trades for you at this moment, even though the original creator and their strategy opened trades sometime in the past. Once you've uh, once you've determined that a strategy works, you can uh, you can monitor this strategy. You can see exactly what it does. Uh, you can also see the kind of trades that the strategy had placed on in your trade history or in your dashboard. Now the dashboard is going to show you a few interesting numbers that uh, I think they're a good to point out. You've got a split and a difference between your profit, your realized profit and your unrealized profit. Realized profit, also called profit all time, refers to profit or, or actual money that you have in your account because trades have closed. So let's say you bought Bitcoin at 27,000, you sold Bitcoin at 29,000 and you bought $100 of Bitcoin. So you have a little bit of profit. You bought, you sold, you bagged the profit. That's your, that's your realized profit. Now you also have something called unrealized profit. Unrealized profit is profit that's created by strategies that are currently holding an asset. Let's say you've bought, same example, you've bought Bitcoin at 27,000, Bitcoin is now 29,000, but you haven't sold. So you have a little bit of profit, but you haven't sold. It's not realized yet. So it's good to bear in mind the distinction between the two. Uh, these are just the 30, 60 and 90 day um, realized profits. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I'm hoping that this helps kind of explain what the tool is and what it actually does. If you haven't signed up to my channel, now's great time to do so and I'll see you next time.